Hello, I'm UTV. I'm Mao Iqbal, and I'm here today with Julia Wapita and Connor McAteer with the Mortar War campaign to talk about their um, their running for MSA presidential elections. So, hey guys, how are you Hi. doing? Hi. All right. So, um, first question, pretty basic. Why did you guys decide to run in the MSA presidential race? Um, well, I think I'll start off. Um, I was inspired to run for the presidential um, position after a friend encouraged me about what they saw the skills that I had that they thought that would be fitting for the, the role. And, um, you know, I didn't want to go into it knowing absolutely nothing. And so I, I uh, you know, filed, but like I spent a lot of time talking to students on campus and organizations and learning about what they were passionate about, um, how they impacted campus, and um, ways that they saw. Um, room for improvement in their influence and um, other organizations' um, influence on campus. And I was just inspired by the students of Mizzou, and so I, can, I was really um, inspired to continue to pursue uh, the presidential position because I wanted to be a part of the change that these students um, hope to continue making on campus and be their advocate and be a support and connect um, organizations on campus to continue to make a change. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned briefly during the BEC debate that I wanted all students to feel included mm -hmm. and I felt that in some areas, some organizations, um, a voice was being lost. Um, so that's extremely important for all voices to be at the table. And being a part of MSA prior to running for the election, I noticed that um, through the committee meetings, the full Senate that we had, um, sometimes the lack of involvement in student body. So I really wanted to um, essentially supercharge that and try to get as many voices to roar together um, to at the table. Right, because that's the slogan that you guys are running under is more to roar, meaning like give more uh, roar to more voices. And so what do you mean by that? Like what, what groups would you like to represent specifically? I think that we can't single out a single group because I think we want, we're supposed to reach all corners of campus. And so um, truly there are you know, there are the students that are in Senate um, and voicing their um, academic colleges and uh, representing just students at, like the, in the at-large positions in Senate. But um, I think that there are organizations on campus like the um, Mizzou Unity Coalition, MSSPC, Active Minds. I mean, the list goes on and on because we all know that we have tons of organizations on campus. And I think that um, it's more about representing every facet and corner um, of campus to have their position and uh, voice heard. And um, we do a good job of, I think, uh, collecting. I think there's um, a thing called joint session uh, with all the presidents of very large organizations. And in those large organizations, there are tons of students that uh, represent organizations, um, like you'd call them smaller organizations, I suppose you could say. But um, I think that we want to emphasize making sure that the we bring everyone together um, and give everybody, regardless of what part of campus they're on, um, their voice to roar. Yeah. So with the More to Roar slogan, we wanted more students to come together to roar as one body, as one Mizzou. So that's really what we're focusing on, bringing everybody together as one Tiger, as one Mizzou, as one school. Okay. And I think you guys mentioned it in your um, platform that like um, a way to sort of promote diversity is to have like a standing committee with like representatives from like each organization and to hold meetings with them. So um, what do you hope to accomplish by having these like meetings and organiza like organizations coming together? Yeah, so there's um, Joint Council, which is, uh, there's 13 organizations on campus and all the presidents sit together and speak there. But, um, and that's, that occurs once a month. But um, we have this vision for, you know, inviting presidents of all organizations, um, not just those 13, um, to come together because I, I have this, I, I believe that just being present and visible and seeing, putting faces to people, uh, to organizations helps um, you get excited about what they're doing in the organization and then um, translating that information back into the organization that they represent, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's a give and take relationship. Like, you know, you give your presentation and your update to all the other organizations, but you also learn about um, the other organizations to then take it back and share um, to the people that you're interconnect interconnected with. Yeah, so having everybody sit together as one um, at one table, 
allows for there not to be a miscommunication um, because as we've seen, as we know, that the more people it goes through, sometimes the message tends to break apart. Um, so by having direct contact, direct feedback um, from organizations to us and from us to them, we can have a better line of communication. All right. Yeah. And so um, there's not that much time left to campaign, but um, what types of issues and strategies do you think are the most important to focus on now that you guys are in like, the, the home stretch, if you will, of the race? Yeah. I think the most important thing is making the students excited about um, the future of MSA and like hopefully like if we win excited about who they've elected to be um, their pre like the president for their president and vice president for their student body. Um, I want to be I a vision I want to be open and transparent um, if I'm elected in the office and like Connor obviously does as well. Um, and I want students to not feel like we're strangers when we step in. And we want to, um, you know, we're sitting at speaker circle, um, making students excited about our booth, um, handing out stickers and whatnot. And we want them to feel like, they're like, oh yeah, I saw, I saw them trying to engage with me and um, get to know me as an individual and hear about the organizations that I'm passionate about, you know, and learn about them. And so that's kind of what we hope to do in this home stretch is just be very visible and um, very engaged with the student body. Yeah, so we're really focusing on having that hands-on feel. We want every student to know us, not just know about us. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we're focusing on, why is that individual touch. I was just going to ask, why is it important to have uh, students feel like they know you and have, have this increased familiarity with the student body of like, oh, these are going to be my MSA president and vice president? Yeah. Um, I think I said, I touched on this in the BEC debate, but through my experience at Mizzou, I found that you gain so much more in the people that you're working with when you know them and you know about you, their lives. Uh, and some of the organizations that I've been in, we start off our meetings with our highs and our lows. So you know kind of the underlying undercurrent of like their lives and what's, what's happening. Um, so then you can uh, better understand them as leaders and better understand how to work with them. And we want people to know who we are and know that uh, we're genuine people that we want to uh, like we want to be effective leaders and so that's why we want them to know us because I think that um, there's a trust that will be built and people will feel comfortable coming and talking to us and knowing that our door is going, sorry I just shook the mic, um, knowing that our door is going to be open and um, that uh, they'll know us as people and they'll, f they'll feel more comfortable approaching us with questions because they'll know we care, like genuinely. Yeah, we want to be more friends than strangers so I think by really having that relationship with students is extremely important because then they know that's Julia and Connor representing them that's just not our MSA president and vice president. Okay do you think that um, that's something that MSA is kind of having an issue with currently and that's something you definitely like to improve on is more transparency? I've been inspired by the the coffee on the couch. I think that it's a foot in the right direction, like a step in the right direction. You know, um, inviting students to be like it's it's not a weird, it's not a stiff um, structure, and that you cannot come and talk to the top, uh, to the to your president. Um, so I don't I don't think I think that they are genuinely wanting to make efforts to make it um, better. I I I don't want it to be a division. I want it to be an army of students coming together and working together towards a common goal because I, I do believe that the student body wants they 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 want it to be someone that represents them and they want it to be somebody that's that's, that's not not a joke you know we mm -hmm. we care about the student body and I think that students are um, passionate about making it better yeah um, today I actually had a student that walked up to me and she was a freshman and she said Connor how can I get involved in MSA and we had a conversation about that because she said, as of right now, it's a little confusing. It's a little hard to understand. And I think all organizations, they have their struggles, things that they need to work on. I think being visible um, is something that MSA can work on. So again, um, having events that are at the student center, areas that are heavily populated with students where there's a lot of traffic, I think we can do more things there to show that some of these um, organizations, auxiliaries like Stripes, are done through MSA. Right. And so this is more uh, towards your platform specifically. 
And so your platform has four points, that's student mental health, diversity and inclusion, campus safety, and student success. And so why did you pick these issues as um, issues to advocate the most for, or to base your campaign on? Yeah, um, well we were inspired by the four pillars of the university, first and foremost, um, go Tigers. But um, we, um, we thought that, like for sure, for sure um, mental health, it, will, it touches everyone, no matter where you are, where you're from, and where you're going. And um, for all, honestly, for all of them, I think that there's loads of sub-bullet points. Um, those are, aren't just our generalized ideas, but there's specifics under each one. And I, I feel like um, by kind of having those broad categories, we really dove in on the sub-points and um, tried to touch as much of campus as we could. Um, and then there's still room for improvement, um, definitely, in increasing um, the bullet points that we touch on. But I think those um, pillars encompass a lot of um, the Mizzou experience and what students hope uh, to see and how they hope to grow whenever they're at Mizzou. Yeah, so we chose these four pillars because we really believe that they reach everyone and that everybody has in some sense um, experienced one pillar or the other. Um, as Julia said, these pillars aren't complete. They're still always going to be adaptable, always going to be growing, always room for improvement. Um, and that's again where we need the students' input input um, to work on that. And I'd like to add that it's like, it's our platform, um, you know, it's, la it's labeled and uh, written up as our platform, but it is the student body's platform, um, and that's why it's going to continue to change, because it's, um, we are here, I keep touching the mic, we are here to like serve the student body, and so um, whatever students believe that we need to um, include or touch on or be supporters of, uh, we'll have, we have a conversation and we talk to them about how can we um, better the platform that we hope to um, implement in, in office. So uh, it's, it's adaptable and changing. Yeah. So it's very fluid based on like what students give you yeah. like, as, as what their concerns are and things Absolutely. like that. Yeah. Because we didn't put anything on the platform that we didn't talk to someone about. Mm -hmm. you know, um, we didn't want to come in acting like we knew everything and saying like this XYZ needs to change because on the outside looking in, I think this is a problem. Because I don't, I don't believe that that's the way to go about things. You, I think you need to be educated on it and um, ask students who have committed their time and energy to, to working on something, ask them like, where do you see the issues? Like, where do you believe that from your experience and time, like, where do you see it needs improvement? So, yeah. We never want to assume. Yeah. Yeah. So are you guys going to like reach out to students from different organizations to figure out like what they're concerned about? Is that kind of where you guys are going for? Yeah, and we already have, um, in order to build the platform, like I said, we haven't added anything until we've talked to someone. Um, and We've reached out, so I've sent so, we've sent so many emails, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and that's something, whenever I sit down with somebody, I've told them, I'm like, this isn't just a one and done conversation, this is um, uh, continue, uh, start, the starting of a dialogue, and that's what I would like to see if we were elected in office, um, a dialogue of uh, always touching base and seeing like where are we growing, where have we kind of fell, fallen short, and how can we continue to um, better the work that we're doing. So how do you plan on dealing with obstacles as far as like make, keeping track of all these different dialogues? Because there are a lot of groups on mm -hmm. campus, many organizations, and obviously like many concerns within those organizations. So how do you plan on making sure that everyone's needs are met and everyone is being heard? Because it can, I'm sure it can get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, taking the time to do meetings is important and then documentation of like what because I, I think you know we take notes in classes you take notes in meetings and you um, follow look back on your notes and you follow up uh, you know we're learning how to be good students but being good students also translates into being um, you know good workers and good person good person yeah and so you you don't just you don't just like um, you need to take every meeting that you do seriously, and um, it's sure it's a it can be taxing, but you like energy wise. But you know, we're going into this knowing how much energy and time that we're going to have to give to the student body to make to do it toward the best of our ability. And so, yeah, your question about how are we going to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks? I yeah. think that um, you have a good team behind you that you can delegate tasks to, but like you also take, I said this in the debate, that you also take time to go into the meetings so then you know the questions to ask um, the people that, are, that you delegate the meetings to 
about like, oh, I was at this meeting last month. Has there been improvement on this issue that we talked about? Um, yeah. Yeah. We want to have a great team in place that is extremely charismatic, uh, detail-oriented, and with great follow-through um, so that when there are areas, when there are meetings and discussions that um, need to be relayed, that that can happen um, and that they have enough resources to do that. But also having the individual, an individual or two um, from each organization um, that that organization elects or um, wants to have represent them, um, then we can all sit down and it can make it a more um, uniformed and a little easier to you know, handle. Because like you did say, there are a lot of organizations. So making it more um, s simple, I would say, because um, everything doesn't need to be extremely complex. Um, and I think a meeting where we all sit down um, would be a good step. And this is more uh, towards uh, the mental health, the student mental health um, issue within your platform specifically. So um, you mentioned that you hope to secure grants to expand mental health resources. And so, what kind of resources do you mean specifically? Like, to, like more programs or more like volunteers within organizations or like speaking events? Like, what what do you guys have envisioned? Yeah, I think it would want be wonderful to increase the amount of resources that are at the counseling center because. Um, and I, um, there's, there, I know there are a lot of hoops you gotta jump through and people you have to talk to, and so that's a com definitely conversations that I wanna have and be an advocate for. Um, and uh, I think there are groups like MSSPC and Active Minds who do really great things to support um, the conversation of mental health on campus. And in my experience and time here, I think that I've benefited so much from small group discussions with individuals about like, how are things going and like on consistent basis is about how things are going um, what are you struggling with what are you um, just just checking in all the time and I know active minds or um, MSSPC they have mighty groups that foster conversations and I think that that's grown a lot in this year and I think they have a vision to continue to grow so um, there's a monetary uh, act that you do with with like for supporting grants and so that's that's a that's a conversation with administration with um, faculty and staff mm -hmm. um, and we want to but we want to be advocates for the mental health resources on campus but there's also um, tangible things that you can do on campus with within student organizations and with students to promote those um, those like the benefits of talking about mental health yeah we want to facilitate discussion about mental health. We don't want students to be afraid of it, um, to be shy of it. We want them to be open about it and to know that this is something that not you um, specifically suffer, but also a lot of other students go through, and whether that's anxiety, whether that's depression, um, you know, just stress from normal day lives, that's something that we need to address because college is stressful on all of us, and um, at times we do need help. So. Um, problems, you know, so, like I said in the BEC debate, don't always wait for you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they strike at a minute's notice, um, and we need resources there for students at that time. Do you think there's like a lack of awareness or kind of like a stigma against mental illness, mental health issues like on campus? I think, um, I just, I don't think so. I think that there is, I mean, it, it's all everyone's opinion for sure on that. I, I think that there is, um, there needs to, there's tons of, I think, resources on campus that can, can help. I think we just need to bring more visibility to them. Um, and I, I think, I mean, I, I learned about another one today. You know, I, I, you, I'm learning every day because people know that this is a big part of our platform and people are reaching out to us to share with us about, like, these, I think this is a great resource that you should promote and um, here's why and here's how it's impacted me. And so I think that student, I think that the um, mental health advocacy community has done a great job of bringing to light the conversation and now I think it's more of, I don't think there's a negative stigma about it. I think people are passionate about um, coming together and supporting each other. Yeah, students are very aware um, and that's something that I'm honored as a student to advocate for that w students um, 
throughout the university are extremely aware of, I think, mental health and that we're understanding of it. Um, again, something I think that we can really work on is visibility. All right. And so you mentioned earlier, too, that um, uh, as far as securing grants goes, that's more of like an administration uh, thing to talk about with them. And so um, you also mentioned in the platform that you'd like to have like mental health monologues and like want to employ counselors from diverse backgrounds so that like um, each uh, student can feel like they have someone that they can trust and talk to. And so um, is there anything that you guys plan on um, you know, like if, if plans do fall through, like as far as implementing these um, these things, like is there any like backup plans that you guys have or any way to overcome that? Well, I think that it's important to give credit to where it's due on ideas. And the, a lot of the things that we have on our platform, like, you know, um, definitely the MSA like executive branch, even, even this um, year they had a mental health week. Um, and but the, I want to give credit to um, MSSPC because they want to have mental health monologues. And they, um, and I think that they are going to do a great job of executing it. I don't, I, don't, I don't foresee that falling through just because they're so passionate about it. And so um, what the backup plan is if, you know, if those things do fall through is coming up with a plan B. Like, I, you know, being adaptable and knowing, like, maybe um, we see organizational issues on it, like organizing an event, but we talk to students who have great ideas. I think the, you know, more voices coming together to roar and bring ideas to the table, because our students are so creative and so talented and so smart that um, it's, it's us fostering the conversation of like, okay, so maybe this didn't work out, but let's think of another solution. We don't give up um, with coming up with, the, with ideas and events, but we work together to like, you know, continue striving towards success. We all want to work together on this, and I think, again, us being a university of 33,000, we can have dialogue, we can have ideas and creative thinking where we can figure out a way to address it if it does, in fact, fall apart. Um, but again, as she said, we have strong confidence in the organizations that are doing great work um, today and continuing it. Um, again, I would say that we just really need to focus on trusting them and working with them um, because they are, they do know what they're talking about. So it's all about supporting. Okay. And so this is more uh, towards the diversity slash inclusion portion of your guys' platform. And so um, there isn't really like a specific mention of like LGBTQ or racial minority populations or like um, disabled populations specifically. Is there a reason why or like you kept it relatively broad or? Um, I would say that we included, um, you know, Mizzou Unity Coalition on our on our platform, and that um, uh, they promote um, like awareness on campus about like accessibility. And um, I I will say that I didn't want to put anything on our platform that we didn't get a chance to talk to someone about. And so for sure, um, LGBTQ issues are incredibly important. And I think that was you know. I acknowledged that we were missing that on our platform in the BEC, BEC debate because I want to be totally transparent about like, yes, I know that it was missing. Um, and that um, is something that we want to fill for sure by having that conversation, you know. Uh, and um, we went to, four, I, I got to sit in on that for, uh, forefront meeting one, um, one week and it was the, one of the best experiences I've had on this entire campaign. and. Um, I guess it, but maybe your question was like why those aren't on there or why it's so broad. It's mm -hmm. because I I don't feel like I want to be more educated before I tell the world, tell the student body like this is what we need to do to make this better because I know that they um, I don't want to put words in the mouths of those communities about like this is what they need. I want um, them to tell me what they need and so it's a continued conversation and, and um, I hope that people understand that like that's where we're coming from on it. It's not because we don't care about these issues. We care so much about it and we want to make sure that we give it its due credit um, and um, make sure it's um, fully like encompassing of what they want in, um, on Mizzou's campus. We made the platform as again it's always changing, it's always growing, it's always developing. And as Julia said, those organizations, those communities that we didn't get a chance to talk to yet, 
um, we didn't want to put words into their mouth um, because we think that's unfair. Um, so we wanted to have a conversation with them, understand their needs, and not assume. That's the biggest part. We don't ever want to assume. We want to know what they need and what they want, and then we can work together as one to figure that out. Yeah, and I will say that we have friends in those communities, and uh, we've had an opportunity mm -hmm. to talk to them, but um, I think that the um, like students that work at the LGBTQ Resource Center would appreciate me asking them first before, I, not just assuming that my sphere of influence in those communities um, is like the end all be all. And I, I, I wanted to get a better breadth, a uh, better reach on um, multiple students in multiple organizations before we made a statement about it, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, okay. Is there a reason why you guys haven't reached out to these populations while making your platform? Um, I will say the only one um, that I, I I, we've said, again, we said a lot of emails, but I, I did reach out to those communities. Um, okay. And so sometimes we just didn't get a response back, and I know that we're all in college, and so that just, that just happens. But the door isn't closed for the conversations. Okay. Um, so in light of recent events, which I'm sure you guys heard about this past weekend, there were international students who have had um, you know, racial slurs uh, thrown at them this weekend. So um, if elected, how will you make sure that minority groups on campus feel safe and welcome? Um, I think first and foremost the biggest thing is setting the, the example and um, of that like behavior is not tolerated um, and uh, and I think it's by fostering the um, conversation about like th those actions are not acceptable and making sure there's education about why it's not acceptable but um, Mizzou is a place where you can grow and learn but be, and you're going to be educated in your academic area, but you're also going to be educated about what is appropriate in, um, you know, the world of uh, like how to be respectful and um, show um, tolerance and like love to everybody and kindness. And um, so, I, if we were elected to be in the office, I think there's um, work to be done to improve those areas. And I think that, again, I, I, I keep, talk, keep talking about conversations, but I would love to ask those, uh, you know, hear from those communities about um, what they see as important. And I, I, I got to talk to um, Chrissy Lai, who's the MISC president, and um, she, was, she said that she just wants, uh, she's had the unique opportunity of being president for two years. And um, she was saying that, like, she, loves um, the conversation um, of, uh, or lo loves the opportunity in joint session to get to talk to um, presidents of um, IFC, PHA, MISC, or not MISC, um, MGC, and NPHC, and I think um, in all those communities, and I think that if we were in office that we would encourage those conversations because then we can, those communities are connecting and talking about like what they need um, in terms of support. Um, and so that's, we hope to foster conversations. We need to make it extremely clear that it shouldn't be tolerated to devalue, degrade, or to harm someone through their words. Um, those communities, those individuals need to feel like there's someone standing behind them, supporting them. And that's what we're here to do. We want them to know that they have our support, that there is someone fighting for them. Um, and I think that, above all, is reassuring in and of itself that they know that they're being looked after and heard. Yeah, because I think you mentioned that in the debate last night, that, or Monday night, that you wanted to make it clear that hate speech will not be tolerated on this campus. Absolutely. So how are you going to make that clear to students? I think first, as I started to do at the BC debate and now um, verbally saying that it is not going to be tolerated whatsoever. And I think from there, um, seeing situations and seeing how they unfold, talking to those individuals that have been subjected to hate speech and working with them and how they want to uh, resolve and address the issue. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add or that or? Uh, I, yeah, I, no, I agree with okay. what I said, yeah. Um, yeah, so this next question is more um, about Greek life, because I know you guys are both involved in um, Greek life. And so um, what is your response to the recent issues that Greek life has been facing? 
Um, so fraternity and sorority life on Mizzou's campus, um, is rep there's a lot of, so many students are, uh, or a large portion of the campus is involved in it. And I think that um, it's important to recognize that these students are also involved in lots of organizations on campus beyond um, Greek life. And so there are students that are very passionate and care about um, all corners of campus. I'm, I'm, every day I'm inspired by the women in my chapter. Um, but in terms of, I think that it's important to have the conversation um, with IFC, PHA, um, MGC, and NPHC. And, in joint, in joint session, there sits LBC, RHA, SAAC, all of these organizations, and I think it's just um, making sure that we are communicating um, and that like the the needs of other corners of campus are expressed to Greek life, and um, Greek life also has a chance to, or the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life has an opportunity to respond, um, and like it's just a conversation, and we need to we need to not talk about each other, but talk to each other, and um, make sure that like. They, we are, that group um, of the fraternity and sorority life is aware of um, maybe places that were falling, falling short in the eyes of other organizations on campus and give them the opportunity to respond, but um, also respond unitedly um, because, in a united way, because we want, uh, we want there to be unity on campus and um, not a disjoint groups. Yeah. We need to be extremely careful to not put an umbrella over all of Greek life because unfortunately there are some individuals that ruin or can distort the vision of Greek life because a lot of members in Greek life are extremely invo involved in organizations, are heavily involved in giving back to the community through community service. So. Um, it's important to address more so the individuals and less the whole Greek life. So how do you plan on uh, changing the perception that this is all Greek life, that like the negative stuff it applies to everyone and in, that's involved in fraternities and sororities? Yeah, um, increasing conversations between Forefront, LBC, and um, the Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Because I, I was even talking to a member on the IFC exec board today about um, what are, what, are, what are they doing to, um, you know, fix this? And they, they said that they're making efforts to work with LBC and Forefront. And I think that it's in process and it's, um, you know, we want, and so our approach to it would be players um, in being hands-on and like encouraging that conversation and being a part of like um, seeking a solution because there, it's a, um, a testament to them and a hats off to them because they're in the process of trying to, um, you know, Make each, make each other interconnect um, already. We are part of Greek life, and I think um, that is something we are at the forefront of. Um, and I think setting an example is the best way to do that, showing that um, there are endless opportunities and that um, you can really get involved in something that you're extremely passionate about and help Mizzou as a whole grow and be better together. And so this is uh, to wrap up the interview. Uh, regardless of the results of this election, so if you guys do or do not get it, what would you like the student body to know? Um, I would love them for them to know that I've been inspired by um, all corners of campus through this. And I've learned so much about myself as a person. And I've um, been challenged and given an amazing opportunity to, to connect with people on campus that um, I don't know if I would have had the courage to go out and reach out. I would have loved, I wanted to have wanted to learn for so long, but I've you know, never had an, an excuse to like justify asking them for a meeting or um, asking them of all of every detail about their organization because I genuinely love to learn. And um, so I've been inspired and moved by the students at this university for sure. I want them to know that regardless of the outcome that we really tried from late nights to early mornings that we really put everything that we have out there. Um, it's for them to inevitably choose what, who they want to represent them. I'm a student president and vice president, but I want them to know that we tried, that we're doing everything that we can, and that we want to learn and grow with them. All right. Anything else you guys would like to add about anything that we talked about? or? No, but I appreciate you having us here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you.